All right, guys. So thank you for your um, reflections. Um, again, I'm very curious about what they are, but let's run because we have a busy day ahead of us. Let me make um, some high-level observations about what I see from your deliverables. It, it seems to me that you are struggling with the totality of the assessments. What I see is that some of you do a good job on five whys, but do not generate a list of uh, problems uh, that is uh, sufficient enough. Uh, some of you generate a large list of problems that you're considering as a team, but you're not uh, getting ahead with PMR. You're not writing down the questions that you're going to ask. You're not thinking enough about uh, what customers you're looking to approach, right? So that, that, that is fine. Uh, the, the, the point of the bootcamp is to put you in a pressure cooker, to give you so much work that you feel like you're almost drowning. You're, you're almost drowning. And this is really by intention. Um, I've had the same experience as a student at uh, MIT Sloan. Same, same basic spirit. You're constantly drowning. And the pedagogical idea is that the only way for you to avoid the sensation of um, drowning and being completely overwhelmed is to rely on your team. Right? So know that this is happening by intention. You might be frustrated by the fact that you have uh, teaching sessions all day long, then you're with the coaches, then you're supposed to submit assignments. It seems like it's this uh, never-ending sequence of things to do. It's drinking from the firehouse. But this is a pedagogical intention for you to embrace the team. All right? So uh, to, to the extent that you can, continue ramping up and handle the totality of assessments that are in front of you. And you, you all seem to be, the majority of you, the majority of you seem to be struggling with preparations for PMR. What I didn't see is uh, enough of a narrative from um, the majority of the teams about who you're planning to talk to, what questions you're planning to, to ask. And so I think today is important for you. And as soon as you begin getting into teams, start working on that. I think this was uh, the, from, from my perspective, this was the biggest missing piece today. Okay. Um, what, this is the uh, five whys from Team 15, and all of these slides are going to be available to you, so let me run fast. But <clears throat> if you look at these five why statements, here's what I observed. I looked at it and I said, okay, the team is starting here with the difficulty in arranging follow-up appointments with health centers, right? And so it begins as a scheduling app, like a very simple idea probably. But the more the team digs, suddenly the team is thinking about the entire design of the healthcare system and the, and, and the design of uh, independent, medical pra independent medical practices, And right? And the beauty of the Five Wise exercise is that it is open-ended. It can take you into directions that you haven't considered before. And so uh, I look at this assignment and I say, you know, uh, this team did Five Wise. You, in, in a rigorous way, I can see the open-ended movement. I appreciated that. So Team 15, where are you guys? That was good. Uh, OK. Uh, <clears throat> now, Team 4, uh, where are you guys? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so here's, um, here's your problem statement. First year university students who are intelligent and hardworking feel uncertain about the choice of the degree they choose because 33% are dropping out without completing their degree within six years. I look at this problem statement and my observation is that you have to be precise about uh, your causation. So you're saying that people are dropping out because they are uncertain over the choice of their career. Right? This is what I'm reading. Maybe your intention was different. Well, clearly, uh, People drop out for a variety of reasons. People drop out for reasons that are financial. People drop out for reasons that are medical. People drop out for reasons that have to do with unforeseen life circumstances. And what you're doing here, and I, I have seen this with a couple of teams, you're taking one causation element and you're elevating it to the level of the single causation element, right? And uh, that can that can set you on the track of uh, creating, a, creating a solution that is uh, very diffuse and ineffective, okay? So you, you have to get a little more specific about the specific causation factors that you're going after, yeah? But that, that's a good start. I'm going to be critical of some of the work here, and I hope you understand why. My, my goal is to express rigor and candor here so that we can learn together, right? But don't take it as a personal criticism of you. This work is very hard defining problem statements, and it takes iterations. Good morning. All right. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, team one, where are you guys? All right, very good. Uh, 
And uh, here's your problem here. Solo female travelers who like adventure and exploring new places. And the first comment I'm making here is, OK, you have uh, characteristics. The solo female travelers say like adventure and explore new places. But characteristics should play a narrowing role. They should take uh, a, a, a pool of potential customers and narrow it down to something more specific to a sub pool. But as I look at it, while isn't every female traveler, solo female traveler, uh, an adventurous and likes to explore new places? So you haven't introduced more information here, right? It seems like a filler characteristic, but not a characteristic that progresses someone's understanding of the problem statement, OK? So look at the uh, winnowing influence of adjectives here, right? And again, uh, you, you're stating here, and your, your misstep here is very similar to the misstep of the previous team. You, you suggest that the solo female travelers feel restricted in terms of where they travel. And this is due to unsafe gender inequalities in the countries they're going to, right? Well, is this, is this, can this be the only cause? Well, well obviously not, right? You know, uh, yes, uh, gender inequalities uh, do, do play a role. Um, in fact, um, I'll, I'll give you a, a personal example. We had uh, recently a, a business trip for female members of our team who are young and single, and um, we, we asked them to you know, go buy fake wedding rings and wear them when they went to a foreign country so that you know, we, we can ensure a higher level of safety. So we, we, we understand the situation, and you know, we have to resort to such, uh, to such tactics to, to ensure greater protection. So I, I get where you guys are coming from. But, uh, you know, safety is not only related to gender inequities, right? As a solo male traveler, would you be perfectly uh, safe and secure traveling across Australia on your own, right? You know, you could get bitten by, I mean, there are many ways to die here, uh, <laughs> right? Um, so explore a range of causations. And then what I want you guys to do is to say, hey, this is the multiple causes of this overall problem. This is what we are going to go after, all right? OK. Team 16, where are you guys? OK. Oh, uh, it's, it's very nice that you're wearing a blanket, because I have here uh, the, the comment, gradually progress away from blanket statements. <laughs> you, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, at any rate, uh, let me read the statement out to you. Young professionals are not productive and struggle to focus. Uh, that may be true with some uh, young professionals, but we have uh, a young professional on our team. His name is Thomas Bazirgi. Thomas Bazirgi, uh, are you, do you struggle to focus, and do you find yourself not productive? Uh, sometimes. Is that the right answer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was hoping you would say never. Again, you, make, you can't make this stuff up. But uh, I, I should point out, we realized that the, we were getting to a specific situation, but we wanted to keep our statement blank because we wanted to do the PMI to focus our statement. Uh, this was more to guide our PMI than uh, to guide our... The OK, I, I get it, and I appreciate the back and forth, but I want to refer us back to the, the comment that, that Brian made in the beginning of the boot camp. The comment is important, right? And I'm, I'm going to reiterate it, not because we don't want the back and forth, but because you know, there are some fundamental mindset and behaviors that accord with good learning, and it's important to exhibit them. Uh, don't be defensive. Don't try to defend yourself, OK? Uh, that, that doesn't take you, take you very far. Right? We can have a discussion, but what I want you to do is to, to take a moment to pause, to think about the observations. I could be entirely wrong. Right? What I'm presenting to you is uh, analysis based on interactions with thousands of boot campers over these matters. Right? So there, there's no need for you to be defensive, because I'm not being personally critical of you. All right? And, and here. Go to the second note that I'm making here. You talk about interruptions. And uh, what you're suggesting is that interruptions are a big barrier to productivity and focus. But there are different kinds of interruptions. 
there are interruptions that are highly productive, right? Interruptions, can you have a conversation without an interruption? No, it's impossible, right? And then in the flow of conversation, you build a relationship, you progress ideas, you collaborate. So here, you guys have to work very hard in defining the kinds of interruptions that you're looking to address because some of them are healthy and actually conducive to focus on productivity. Fair, any questions here? Okay. Sorry, I did have a question. So we, instead of talking about productive and um, professionals and relative professionals, so which kind of characteristics that we're looking to describe the person? Well, first of all, you know, when talking about young professionals not being productive and struggling to focus, it's important to recognize that not all young professionals are unproductive and unfocused, and this is really a matter that's on the spectrum, right? And it's not an absolute spectrum. It uh, depends on time of day, where you work, season, right? There are so many complications here. So we need to dig deeper in trying to understand which ones are those individuals. Right, and, and perhaps, perhaps, and I'm brainstorming with you here, Perhaps you can identify a particular labor segment in which unproductive interruptions are endemic and interruptions in that specific labor segment, interruptions are costly in terms of productivity. Okay? Fair, right? And, and that's exactly why we do five whys. It, uh, it takes out the symptoms and goes to the root. Fair, right? That, that could well be a symptom. And yes? Um, I don't know what you said. The last time we had this dilemma, if we should narrow down our, um, um, our problem to certain categories within that uh, category, uh, but we believe that Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, this is uh, an entirely fair approach. You know, uh, what you will do, you will start meeting many young professionals and begin winnowing it down. Fair, right? You, you start at the high level and then get progressively more refined. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> what I appreciated about uh, this submission is uh, this extract from your document in which you described what you learned through the five whys. Um, and, you know, you, you talk about the, the fact that there are multiple causes. You recognize the very note that I'm making to you. That uh, who, is, who is team six? It's, uh, oh, there, there you go, guys. Do you want to switch teams? <laughs> I'm, I'm not making fun of you. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's wonderful. And this is what I appreciate about the boot camp. It's uh, the, the caring and collaboration and interest in each other. So that, that's all fantastic. Thanks for your feedback, Chip. Yeah. Right? And the, the, the statement that you're making here, there are hidden issues at the root cause of a perceived problem. This is beautiful. Right? In entrepreneurship and in innovation, you often gain advantage by seeing something that is hidden. So that point of reflection was much appreciated. Okay, team seven, where are you guys? There's only one from team seven. Oh, there you are. Outstanding work, Out, <laughs> outstanding work. Look at your five whys. Not only you looked at uh, one problem, you looked at several, and you looked at it in a highly, highly structured way. That was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I was so impressed. I was sitting in my room early in the morning, having the um, terrible uh, instant coffee, looking at this, and uh, this, this uh, totally delighted me. Look, 
like ultimately, 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 the achievement is compounded by small steps. Right? What you're doing here is trying to push yourself. Right? We did not provide this particular framework to you. You devised it. That was out of your own volition. That was your initiative, and I commend you on that. That was so special to see. Yes, sir, Brian, please. No, when I looked at this one, um, I saw your comment yesterday on suspense. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see some suspense in my story that we want to keep on reading. Is that, is that the way you intend the word suspense? Oh, I'm most certainly interested, interested in the progress of this team. I know that this team will go far. I don't need to see what you wrote in the, uh, in, in the table. I, I did read it, of course. But uh, the act on its own matters a great deal. Of oh, it's here. It, uh, so, so what, here. oh no, here. Um, the, the, this is you guys, right? Wait a second, did I mix something up? This is you, right? This, this, this is you, okay, I, I didn't mix anything up. But look, look at the specificity here. These folks are not just talking about people who uh, you know, dislike the fact that we are perhaps uh, treating our environment unsustainably, but they are addressing the segment of Amazon Prime subscribers who are millennials who live in cities. Right? This kind of work um, takes you down the uh, holy grail of specificity. Right. Now, I'm not sure, Brian, if it answers the, the question of suspense. Uh, I'm certainly in suspense about where this team will go, but... Um, the, way, I mean, the way I see suspense here... Uh-huh, please. It's the same way. I see that because I'm a researcher, and we have projects on sustainability in plastic, on the side of packaging. And this looks almost like a movie that's starting, and that's going to be a happy ending. There's a suspense. How are we going to take on a big step? Oh, without a doubt. So uh, um, this is why I was uh, clicking because uh, I thought I, uh, I edited it here. You, you made, uh, you made a, a brilliant observation in your submission. You said that you identified that problems that uh, seem different have underlying environmental drivers. You took problems that were from different domains of human life and you found root commonalities. That was an outstanding statement because you're beginning to look at the world as a system, and you're beginning to identify the drivers of the system. This is a way to make impact, right? So well, well done to you. That was very impressive, and I was very happy to see that. And I want to share this with the class to, to, to show you that your, your classmates are pushing above and beyond. <clears throat> and by the way, all of this is going to be shared with everyone. You have access to each other's assignments, so um, you can go and, and take a look. Team Six, where are you guys? <laughs> Thank you so much for making it super easy for me to read. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was very helpful. Uh, but uh, jok joking aside, um, I am, I'm reading it. Uh, I'm, I'm reading a problem statement. And look, uh, I, I, can see, I can see a good mission. It's, it's a mission of equality. Here, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a mission of uh, advancement, empowerment. So that's, that's fantastic. But uh, here's what I would say. You know, you talk about an assertive female lead, and that's difficult for companies in Australia to find an assertive female lead. I want to know from you what you mean by that. One can imagine different kinds of assertive female leads. Assertive is, is a notion that is a poly-meaning notion. Right? And uh, for you to progress in an actionable way, you have to take that and, and define it with greater specificity. Right? But, but the beginning is um, quite good in terms of mission. But then you also say, currently, there is no way for women to search for companies that support female empowerment and gender equality. And it might be that there is no easy way for women to do that. But to say that there is no way, I would challenge you on that. Because there is a way for women to learn about companies that are fair through their network, through word of mouth, right? I'm sure you can also look up rankings of companies in terms of gender equality. I haven't looked them up, but I've, I would bet that they exist, right? There is one specific. Please. 
Well, well, why don't you say what it is so that you can uh, share it with the team? How are you, sir? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Come on, sir. Just give me, give me a moment to wrap this up. So the advantage for you guys is you have um, a group of fantastic professional women here that uh, you don't have to go far for your PMR. But you know, taking you forward toward your pitch on Friday, when you make a statement such as there is no way, and you make it in the beginning, you diminish your credibility from the start. You put yourself in a hole. Something to watch out for. Now, let me run a little faster now that Bill is here, but still go through it. Uh, this is a team that uh, has a professional who works in the field of uh, finance, wills, legacies. And the statement here, everyone needs a will, though there are already a few established competitors in the market. Therefore, we would like to interview customers who are not yet thinking about a will, right? So they're looking ahead to their PMR and identifying a segment of the market that they would tap that ordinarily is not tapped by companies that serve, um, the, that provide the financial services of wills, and I'm, I'm sure there are others, right? Uh, so um, very good job for conceptually thinking about that group that you want to target today. Uh, this, is, this is Team 18. I uh, appreciated the fact that you began writing down the questions that you're going to ask in your PMR today. Uh, this, is, this is a team that is looking at the problem of people not buying electric vehicles because they're concerned that they take uh, quite a bit of time to charge. Where's Team 18 here? Right? And let me, uh, so, well done. Where would you go to interview these individuals? Fantastic, right? Go to the watering holes. This is where they hang out. Is there, um, is, is there a Chevy showroom in, or Nissan showroom? Like any, any of the manufacturers that make electric vehicles? If you go up to Fortitude Valley, there's like a rich people car dealership in Mecca there. It's like literally just up the road. Yeah. Sorry, what does it suppose? Fortitude yeah. Valley. It's a straight bus from here. You can walk there. Yeah. So the, the, the beauty of what you're doing is you can pretty much deposit yourself at a car dealership and interview people as they go in and out, right? And in fact, go and talk to the salespeople if they will allow you to be inside. Okay. Uh, team two, uh, yes? I'm curious about our, our public statement. Well, I wouldn't call it as uh, correct. Uh, the problem statement, let me play it from memory. Uh, you say that there are environmentally conscious, sustainability-oriented uh, consumers who are interested in buying a, an electric vehicle and do not do so because electric vehicles take six hours to charge. And they're concerned about the, the time that it would take, right? That was a problem statement. Uh, what, uh, I think this is a fine problem statement to, to start Right? You are identifying a group of people whose need is unserved. You are making a hypothesis about why the need is unserved, and that is they're concerned about the charging times. Right? And you went through the five Ys exercise in which you talked about lithium batteries being the current standard for battery technologies. They are safe and they're cheap, and, but uh, they, take a, uh, they take a while to charge. Right? That's the gist of it. Um, the, the interesting thing here that you should ask is, clearly there are people who buy electric vehicles for whom this is not an issue, 
not an issue. And what's important for you to do is to understand why some folks cross that threshold of anxiety. They are okay with fast, uh, with, with the current charging times, and others are not. But don't answer this. I'm just, you know. I have a question. I yep. Uh-huh. Um, is, it, is it a good process to start with a hypothesis, like the people who have this concern are not the ones who charge it at home and use it day to day, but the yeah. ones that need to travel at some distance and are concerned that the range might run out before they need to get there to the distance. So they don't want to go to the, the point of waiting six hours at a wait point waiting for the car to charge, and hence they step away from life. It's a hypothesis that we would like to test. Is that a good process? Well, uh, I would say this is a process as good as any, and uh, Bill knows well that uh, after I graduated from Sloan, where Bill was my, uh, my professor, and he was my best entrepreneurship professor, <laughs> he, uh, he, was, he, he, was also, he was also a uh, very dear mentor to me that uh, after Sloan, I uh, worked at a venture firm called Flagship Pioneering, and this is in fact the venture development process that is espoused by the firm. They call it explorations. They explore new frontiers, but they do it in a hypothesis-driven way. And my, my job was to create hypotheses that we then went out and tested. And uh, one of the companies I started with the firm was a company that um, used uh, graphene to extract rare earth minerals from mine tailings. And the hypothesis that we, made was, that we made was a scientific hypothesis that there are technologies today that will allow you at a high efficiency rate to extract rare earth minerals. And it was a problem at the time because most of the rare earth minerals are in China. Right? And so there is a concern uh, for the world in terms of geopolitics and, and access to this important resource base. And so you make a hypothesis, you go out and test it. So you know, from my experience, this is as good a process as any. Bill, any observations about, uh, about hypothesis testing as a way for the entrepreneurs here to proceed? No, the opposite. It's fundamental to what you do. And you do it throughout the whole process. People say, why do you have, you know, say your things at the end? Um, your hypothesis, I'll talk about that later, but you're always testing hypothesis. There you go. All right. You know, the there is a food waste team in every boot camp. Mm -hmm. Seriously, in almost every boot camp, there is not one, but several teams thinking about food waste. Uh, where is team two here? All right, and we ask ourselves, why is there a team focusing on food waste in, in every boot camp? And my, my answer is, uh, this, is that the, this problem is very poorly understood. Uh, this problem is very hard, doesn't have an obvious or feasible solution, and therefore people from around the world are continuing and persisting toward the solution. But what you've got to do here is be much more specific about what you mean by food waste. What kind of food waste are we talking about? You, you're talking about food waste, organic food waste from restaurants. Be more specific about what kind of restaurants, what kind of food waste. Because you make the statement here in the, in the problem statement that food waste goes to landfills. I would challenge you by saying that while well, food waste is organic waste, it doesn't have to go to landfills. It can actually be used as fertilizer, right? And it degrades. Therefore, it would not present a problem in terms of the enlargement of uh, landfills. Do, do you see where I'm coming from? Okay? So I don't want to discourage you from this problem. Keep persisting. But of course, it's fine if you choose a different one. But the only pass here for you guys is uh, extreme specificity, right? And Brian, you see a food waste uh, uh, team in, in every boot camp. Any other observations for the team here? Um, and I, I think it's, I'd say, the biggest problem that society has today. That, uh, the, the real problem is food waste gets everywhere. And the problem is, uh, and it's such a fascinating once you get into plastic, plastic is worthless. You get into paper, it's worthless. It basically kills everything. And, and, and you say, and whenever you talk to people, people in, I know that you speak very well, because I've worked with you like the last six years, and everybody says, well, the easy thing is that people, you know, put it in a different 
back. That solves the problem. But then everyone thinks humans are stupid and they want to do that. So uh, I think it's a fascinating problem. And I think that likewise, it's very difficult to do it. You really need to do very good PMR. Very good PMR. Nobody has figured it out. Nobody has done good PMR and good five wise. Yeah. So you can figure it out. And this is a very good problem for illustrating the importance of specificity, both in terms of the customer segment and in terms of the problem. Because you can be even more specific about food waste. Is it food that customers haven't finished on their plate? You know, you get a plate and some is left. Is that food waste that you're addressing? Or is that food waste that is, uh, for example, vegetables that were unused, meat that was unused? It didn't go on the plate, right? It's pre-plate waste. You, we can talk about post. I'm kind of I'm riffing with you here for, for a second. It's, there is post-plate waste and pre-plate waste. And obviously, the, the collection mechanism may be different here. How you collect and what you do with post-plate waste would be different with, from pre-plate waste. Fair, right? For example, perhaps you could use pre-plate waste as uh, food for animals. I'm, again, I don't know. Um, I don't know about the health implications or regulatory implications, but you can riff in the following way. Yeah? That's great. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Okay. Uh, team 13, again, thank you so much. Your creative juices were flowing. And uh, you made it very easy for me to read your deliverable. Um, but, uh, but indeed, your creative juices were flowing. I was impressed by the fact that uh, not only you had an interview script. Bill, so today they're going after PMR. This team here prepared a script that it's planning to present to its potential customers today. And what's more, you had an operational plan for your PMR. One group would go to nomads, wherever this is, and one group would start at the visitor center. So this is fantastic. That was very nice to see. Well done, team. Where are you guys? Team 13? OK. Uh, but next time, make it easier for me to read, please. <laughs> All right. Team 14, outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. Where are you guys? Well done. I was so impressed. It is very clear here that you are engaging very deeply with um, five whys and understanding root causes of uh, the problem. You start, you start with a, a big problem statement at the top. It, it's not so much a problem statement. You're not stating a problem yet. You're expressing a hunch that, hey, you know, a lot of kids in our society are unhealthy. Let's try and do something about it. And then you progress toward the understanding of the problem. And I encourage you folks to actually read this five wise statement uh, when you get a chance, you ultimately progress to a point in which you link the hunch to the idea that parents don't have a lot of time in the morning to make lunch for their kids. And, and, and therefore, the, the solution that ends up being dominant is parents offering their kids the opportunity to eat in school, which is generally not healthy, which you describe as a systemic problem because schools do not have the kitchens to provide healthy food. Very well done. And the reflection that you provide, I appreciate this statement from you. We didn't realize that we would need to make a decision between approaching this from the perspectives of schools and from the perspective of the parents, right? And this is stakeholder analysis. This is one of the factors we provided in your problem definition framework. Who are the problem stake stakeholders? The parents, the schools, the children themselves, right? And you're beginning to see and engage with the complexities of the subject matter. Also, I appreciate the fact that you submitted the video. That was very nice, sir. I, uh, I watched it. Well done. OK, Team 17. On the previous one? Sure. So looking at a lot of these, um, it, I think there were differences in all of our systems as well. Uh -huh. And I know from my perspective, we had a wider problem statement that would have allowed us to go in and actually do more of the lives and, and uh, figure out what you asked for. 
Mm -hmm. This is a fascinating phenomenon that you describe, right? And let me not uh, respond to this question by saying either the coaches are right or they are wrong and either I'm right or wrong. Right? That, that's not the way to, to look at this problem. But uh, I really don't know how to explain it, but I have a suspicion that you know, all of us, to one extent or the other, have this inherent fear of failure. I actually think it's not cultural. I think there is something deeper uh, about this, and I see it in kids. Uh, in, in kids who have not been trained to be afraid of failure. And that makes people, the fear of failure actually makes people very afraid of being specific. Because then the logical connection is, well, if we're very specific and if we pick this specific target group and they say no, then we don't have anything, right? That's my current um, observation on, on this matter. But what you want to do, you want to make your PMR robust and actionable, right? And imagine you take a group of 10 individuals who are very different and you interview them. Well, you are not really getting any robust data about what segment has uh, a greater need for your solution or not, right? It's, it's a very diffuse group. Or you're not getting a sense of there is an opportunity in that segment because you took a broad slew of the market and only got small data points from each segment. But if you find a specific segment and you interview 10 prospective customers in that segment, after that interview process, you have a much more reliable sense of whether you should proceed there or not, right? And so it's fine, right? You can, be, you can, you can get real specific today, and you might find today that, hey, this is, this is not what we're looking to pursue. And in fact, I want you to say this on Friday. We're going to instruct code the judges in the program to, to reward the fact that some students went down the path of validating an idea, they honestly invalidated it, and they went in a different direction. That is going to be a plus. Okay? I hope this is, this is helpful to you. All right. Uh, team, team 17. Um, the, let me read out the, the problem here uh, to you all. Every person sitting on chairs for long durations without getting up are susceptible to drastic physical and mental health issues such as poor blood circulation, weakened muscles, cancer depression. There are multiple alternative solutions and prevention techniques to help reduce the effects of long hours of sitting. The, the beginning is, is a good beginning. What um, I would challenge you on, you're not describing the limitations of these uh, uh, alternatives. Like, you, you say that the, there are alternatives, and this is an honest um, approach by you, but you have to describe why these alternatives are insufficient. And here, you do not do that. T Team 17, where are you folks? Right? Do, do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. Okay, that's good. So let's, let's keep moving. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, I want to know if this is a real problem. It's good to know that there are alternatives. What if the alternatives are sufficient? Right? And may not, they may not be solving the problem in an absolutely ultimate way. Right? They may not be sending the customer into a state of nirvana, but they do a fine enough job. Right? And you are going to have to articulate that the, the delta is sufficient enough for you to introduce a new solution. Right? So basically, I mean, when we go out and we look at alternatives, if, if we see that the market's already got enough alternatives in there, it's, would you say then you look at down this idea or you should still persist in trying to Well, I think it's, it's up to you then to provide a narrative that you're comfortable with that 
a much more superior solution as possible and therefore is worth your time. And when you look at the electric uh, vehicle team, I'm just going to offer it as a contrast. What they're saying is that, well, there is no electric car out there that charges in less than six hours, right? And that's in contrast to, to your position. There are alternatives. And let's understand if they're sufficient, okay? Team, team, team nine, where are you guys? Okay, very good beginning. You, uh, you, you are expressing a sentiment that international students um, tend to struggle, and I affiliate with uh, the sentiment. I've been an international student myself, so I see where you're coming from, and let me read out your problem statement to, to the group at large. International students who are studying at tertiary institutions in Australia, what is tertiary? Tertiary. Um, ah, I got you. Thank you. Are uh, suffering from mental health ailments with one in five Australian university students being diagnosed with depression. To deal with, contrib with uh, contributing factors such as academic failure, financial strain, and cultural shock, many have turned to problematic behavioral patterns such as gambling and social withdrawal that further entrench the condition. Okay, uh, first, uh, the, the, the first point I'll make is the one I'm making here is, uh, well, there are, there are different contributing causes to mental health. Like, I've been homesick, but you get over it. Right? Is a solution really necessary here? You just go through it. It's a rite of passage that you look back on. It makes you better as a person, right? But then be specific about what kind of mental problem, mental health problem you're going after, and the specific reason that it exists. Right? If uh, the person is experiencing mental stress because of financial duress, that's a whole different matter, right? Than helping a person with homesickness. So it's important for you to, to dig there. Now, a uh, minor statistical point, you're addressing international students here, but here you offer the statistics that one in five Australian university students. Does it mean Australian and international? Does it mean only Australian? If it means only Australian, well, clearly this statistic in that case doesn't matter, right? If it's a composite statistic, well, let's see what the mental health rates are for international students specifically. They might be lower, they might be higher, we don't know. But uh, the statistical nuance matters here. Yes, please. Uh, there's like an addition in the recap that said um, that stats found that international students have uh, much higher margins of... Oh, you did? Yeah. I'm, so, I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry that I missed it. Would that be sufficient? Uh, I just want to know whether it's sufficient or we should um, also... Do we need to provide the contrast, or do we just give the figure for the international students? Well, the contrast is interesting, right? If you say, hey, um, international students tend to, to, to tend to suffer at much greater rates, that's interesting. So it's not about the design of the university system per se or the university experience per se, but there is something going on that is unique to international students that we need to look at deeply. So yeah, that's relevant for sure. The, the comparison is, is relevant, but it's not enough. You've, you've got to engage in a discussion of what specific uh, mental health conditions you're talking about and the contributing causes. All right? Thank you. Sure. Yes, please. Um, with a common statement like this that can have lots of different causes and different effects, do we, um, is there a way in which we You know, uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. You don't know this yet. Yeah. Some, some problems can be addressed simultaneously. <laughs> Other problems need to be looked at separately. Too early for you to answer this question, right? What, what you want to achieve, you want to achieve a conversation with uh, a person who is going to be judging your pitch, right? And I don't want to focus on the, the Friday pitch too much, but you want to make sure that you don't diminish your starting position, your credibility, by not engaging in the complexity of the matter. So we could, for our problem statement specifically, we could be like, we're going to focus on this, but when we're designing our um, questions, we want to know what those other causes and effects would be so that we're thinking so that those questions are open enough to be able to see if we've made that right assumption there. Right. Or, or, for example, let's just uh, brainstorm about a solution. Let's say you're addressing the problem of depression that stems from financial duress, 
you know, it is challenging for a lot of international students to pay for their tuition. I've, I've, I've been down there. And you say, okay, we are going to create, and again, this is a brainstorm. We are going to create a financial loan system. We are going to make it easier for international students to afford education abroad. And what we'll do, in addition to providing the loans, we'll create on our platform an underlying social community for the international students. Right? And so what you're doing, you are addressing the problem of financial duress together with the problem of isolation. Right? And so in this case, your solution is addressing two problems. But that's just an example. Right? You can take a different approach as well. Okay, team, team eight, again, uh, thank you so much. You, you clearly care about me very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, let me read out your problem statement. Where are you, team eight? Okay, there you are. Um, elderly people, 65 and up, are often, um, Bill, are you 65 and up? Are you? <laughs> would, you would you consider yourself elderly? Huh? Well, let me just ask you, do you feel socially isolated? And do <laughs> Don't worry, your, uh, your best student from Kyrgyzstan is always there for you, <laughs> even when you're isolated. Um, elderly people, 65 and up, are often socially isolated and live alone. They don't like being needy, and they value their independence. However, they often can't be independent without health support. Currently, if injured, they're able to get a taxi to a doctor or an ambulance to the hospital. However, going to a hospital places a weight on public health care system, affects mental health, and health care outcomes for elderly patients are better if they're, if, they're, they're, if they're in their own home. What's the problem here? You're not stating a problem. You're saying two things that uh, there are some elderly people who are independent and like being independent, and then it's better for the healthcare system to have them at home rather than the hospital, right? Where's the suspense, okay? So <laughs> this is what you need to think about. Okay, Team 12, where are you guys? Outstanding job, look at that. 61 problems considered, well done, well done. That was great to see. And, um, okay, let's look at your problem statement. Married couples who have been married for more than one year feel frustrated when their conversation gets disrupted by a smart device because it damages the quality of their interactions and relationship. To deal with this, they currently try to establish private quality time. However, turning off all smart devices has proven to be very challenging and therefore ineffective. And what I'm commenting on here is the fact that this is a genuine problem statement going back to the idea of suspense. You don't know what the solution is. Like this is, uh, this is a pervasive problem. It's a complicated one. You really don't know how to solve it yet. And problems of this nature, once you go through a process, once you get very specific, represent fantastic opportunities for innovation. Right? You know, go back to the definition of the word problem. It's a gap between current experience and ideal experience without feasible or obvious way to bridge the gap. So that's a great start for you, Team 12. And Are we in the solution part yet? Here? No, not at all. Today, you are not considering solutions at all. There should not be a word solution in your lexicon today, particularly as you engage with prospective customers. All right? You're just learning, learning, learning. Yes, sir? Um, um, just to answer that question, what's on your mind so far? <laughs> well, uh, excuse me? Did you submit it? If it, was, if it was submitted, I should have seen it. If, if it's not here, it means I didn't see it in the platform. If I didn't see it in the platform, it could be that I made a mistake. The platform didn't show it to me. What we'll do, show me your assignment. I will, I will work with you. If I didn't present it here, I will, I will come by and we can, we can discuss it, OK? okay. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yes? Uh, just to add to that, we're in team 11, but you can discuss OK. Oh, uh, let, me, let me write down the teams um, that, that I missed. Okay, team, team three.
Team 11 and 10. Team 10. So 3, 11, and 10. Okay, I will come by to all of you. I'm sorry. This is, this is very likely my bad, but I look forward to reviewing your work. Now, as Bill is setting up, folks, 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 raise your hand if you can hear me. Okay, I love it. Now, as uh, Bill is uh, setting up uh, his, his slides, Bill, thank you so much for, for your patience. I'm sorry it took a little longer. I want you guys to um, spend uh, three minutes uh, reflecting on the experience so far and what you learned. Thank you very much. Bill? All right, guys. Um, teams, the three teams that I did not review early in the morning. My apologies again. I had the chance to do it now. So let's, uh, let's look at it. Uh, team 10, where are you guys? There you are. Uh, it's good to see you. I appreciated the following sentiment expressed in your deliverable. You write that you found the five wise exercise challenging as often at each level the way you answered the question could take you down a different line of outcomes. And that is the entrepreneurial anxiety. It's open-endedness. You might go down a different path and lose a sense of control. Now, why is this, why is this important? The, the, the discussion here is, is the following. You know, the impetus for you to be here is to change the world. This is why you're here. But to understand, to change the world, you must understand it first. You must understand its fundamental drivers. And to do that, you have to expose yourself to this vulnerability of open-endedness. Yes, Going through this process might take you down a path that you didn't expect. And you've got to be open to that. So, Team 10, I appreciate this insight from your deliverable. Thank you. Okay. Now, the other important point is, even though the exercise is called five whys, it doesn't mean you need to stop at the fifth why. Continue further if you believe it's warranted. Right? So you start with the premise, and this is number one. Let's look here. Long wait time at the restaurant. After five whys, you arrive at the following statement. People aren't prioritizing to, help, to call ahead of time. Don't stop there. Why aren't they prioritizing? Right? Because if you ask that why one more time, you might find that, hey, this is a problem that, you know, we talk about problem amplitude and problem frequency. Problem amplitude is how severe is the problem. And problem frequency, how frequently does it occur? Now, in that moment when you arrived at the restaurant and you want to have a great time with your friends, problem amplitude is high. You're not getting a table, it aggravates you. But what is the problem frequency? How frequently does this problem occur? Once a month, possibly, once a quarter, more likely, and the less frequent the problem is, the less likely is the customer to adopt a new solution, right? So had you asked one more why, you may have found, hey, this is an interesting problem, but we just don't think it's frequent enough for us to get the pool, okay? Think about that. All right, team three, where are you guys? I appreciated seeing you guys going above and beyond. I'm presenting this because, you know, it is clear that the team is thinking systematically about the underlying drivers of the problem. And look, we're not asking for the graph, we're not asking for a graph that is well designed, but what I'm seeing is the intention by the team to hit it hard do the best job they can. And ultimately, it is uh, the compounding of small actions like this that takes you very, very far. So well done to you. Now, <clears throat> you, you make uh, a, a point here that is similar to the point made by the previous team that, you know, as you, everyone alive here? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you, sh you share the perspective in your deliverable that, 
as you went through the exercises last night, you kept uh, going off on ta tangents, right? And yes, this can be disquieting. Wait a second, we're here for a week. There is so much to do. We don't have enough time. How possibly can we be going on tangents? But you know, if if you look at the if you if you if, if you read about <laughs> everything is <laughs> right, right. Uh, it, I think it's it's important for, for all of you when you get a chance to to study the history of science and to and, and to read and to read people who theorize about how science evolves, and uh, you will find a common perspective that anything that is discovered is discovered by accident because a discovery is the unknown unknown, and therefore how can you discover it or know of it a priori? And therefore, you discover it can only be accidental. And how can accidents be without tangents? Right? So embrace tangents. And I'm very glad that you, you're finding this tension between progress and tangents, and you're allowing yourself to free flow. Very, very good. I appreciated that. Now, look at the, look at the problem statement of the team. And I want the class to ask, can you spot a contradiction here? And contradiction in the sense discussed yesterday. I mean it in a positive sense. Contradiction as opportunity for innovation. Yes, please. Exactly. I want a Lamborghini, but it's expensive, right? You know, we're talking about young people who want to look good, but by definition, you don't have a lot of money, right? That's Marius, that's your fan base. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if, if you don't know, Marius is a uh, pop sensation in, in Japan. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> no, seriously. Do you, do you guys know that? No. Yeah. Can we have an autograph session? Yeah. Can you, can you do oh, your classmate here, your classmate is a real pop star in Japan, right? I need a picture. He has a real following. People love him. I'm very happy to have you here. But that's your audience, right? And a lot of interesting startup opportunities are based on a contradiction of this nature. Uh, raise your hand if you know about Rent the Runway. Rent the Runway. Same basic concept, right? You rent a design address. You cannot afford to buy it, but they'll give you an opportunity to rent it. And so this company found an interesting way to break the trade-off. We'll let you have something special for the night, right? So. You are on a path toward an, innovating, to, toward an innovative possibility by virtue of finding a contradiction. Right? Obviously, you have to become more specific. There are folks that you need to talk to, but that's a good start. And uh, Team 11, fantastic work. What I appreciate here is that you are documenting, you are documenting your process. You're describing what you're learning, how you're learning it, how you're working as a team. And this is, this is a process that's called metacognition. You're not only involved in the, condition, in the cognition surrounding what you're engaging with, your innovation opportunity, but also how you're pursuing the innovation opportunity as a team. That's a cognition from above. Very important thought process. Brian, you study the science of learning. Can you comment on the value of metacognition? I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but... Uh... No, no, I know it, I know it, I know it. Uh, so there, there's uh, a lot of research that shows that by thinking, uh, you learn. And so, for example, they've done things like dancing, for example. They'll, they'll have you watch at someone, and then you try to do the same thing. If you haven't watched it, you won't be able to do it. So we have we don't really know exactly what it is, so we can see some uh, talks by Ramachandran and on empathic neurons. And you have empathy with yourself, so you can think about things.
MIT, and there's actually a professor at MIT just discovered that there's an area of the brain which is around here that only activates about this size when you think about what others think. So we now know that this metacognition has its own part of the brain, right? And then, and then there's what's, what's called growth mindset. Yeah. That's why also, by the way, why the best teacher is a student. Uh, because the student has just thought about how to do it so they can explain it better. Once you've done it for so long, you don't know. And actually, they've shown you get the best surgeons, the really bad teachers. They cannot even tell you what they do. So, yeah, they don't, they, so if they interview these surgeons, and they're not saying what they do. They're saying what something different. So I think it's very important. Thank you. Thank you. Let me jump forward because there's something else that's important here that's important to discuss. I think I said the word important three times. Maybe that was important, but probably not so important. Anyway, uh, you know, you you do a very good job, obviously, of uh, the metacognition of your overall project, but let me challenge you. So you start with the following problem. Some adventurous and social solo travelers don't have easy and trustworthy ways to connect with new people when traveling to a new destination. That very much sounds like a solution statement to me. That sounds like you guys want to start a travel app and uh, massaging the problem to adjust to that. Where are you guys, Team 11? Right? And, 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 and challenge me back. And I, I'm drawing the following, I'm drawing, I'm drawing this conclusion because of your answer to the first why. People don't have a trustworthy way to connect with others when they're traveling. Why? Because they want to learn about the local culture. Well, obviously, they want to learn about the local culture. But that's not why they don't have a trustworthy source, right? And then you end your entire 5Y sequence with, with, a, with a solution statement that you wanted from the start, because there is no trustworthy source. Solo travelers don't know anyone in your location because there is no trustworthy source. And it becomes sort of a tautology. You're going in circles. You want to create a travel app, and your answers to your whys are guiding you to this predestination, right? That, that's a perception that I'm drawing from the way you've gone through the exercise. This is something to watch out for. This uh, impetus towards solutionism is very strong in all of us, right? And it's important to suspend it and look at the problem on its own. I'll stop here unless there are any questions. <laughs>